there are things so easy to grasp that there is no need to wrap it up in any simple terms. You are what you are fighting for. And that makes us Europe. Because we spill blood for it and for its values. Good afternoon, this is Henry Keane on your ATV channel explaining hard things in easy terms for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. The thing is, it is easy to be Ukrainian these days. Because personally, some of us lost so much that there is simply nothing left but to become what you really are. Thank you for coming. I would like to hug you and thank you, but I can't. Why? We are free people. Won't they kill me? Security. <laughs> Understandable. And while uh, on an individual and personal level, the level of family, we suffer unbearable, enormous grief, as we're losing our loved ones, our children, for God's sake. Still, as a nation, we are reborn as Phoenix in the flames of this warfare, and our future is now. We know the sacrifice that your people have endured for Europe. And we must honour it not only with words, but with action, with the political will to ensure easier trade and with the fastest possible accession process, with funds for your people, with help in reconstruction, with training for your troops, with military equipment and defence systems you need to win. And now states must consider quickly as a next step, providing long-range systems and the jets that you need to protect the liberty too many have taken for granted. This war is unjust, unfair, dreadfully illogical. How can someone start a war for new territories while his own lands outside of a rich capitals is a manifestation of poverty and decay both economically and socially? What do you think, dear well? In what country can a president call a chief of Nazi propaganda Joseph Goebbels as a talented man while standing next to someone whose relatives and families Goebbels murdered in millions to Jewish rabbi? You said that you have to be stupid to deny the past. You know, it seems to me that you need to be not just stupid, you need to be arrogant to deny what happened. But unfortunately, this impudence, just like 70 years ago, often achieves its goal. After all, Goebbels said, the more incredible the lie, the faster they will believe in it. And he got his way, he was a talented person. Vladimir Putin at the meeting with representatives of international public and religious organizations. And that Jewish rabbi next to Russian Tsar, why is he not smiling? Can you imagine what one must feel when someone who calls the chief of Nazi propaganda a talented man is the president of one's country? What thoughts are running through rabbi's mind? A talented Joseph Goebbels and Putin? A literally goddamn dream team. So... What Nazi attitude we are talking about here in Ukraine today in a country where the president is Jewish? And what is the phenomenon of the country where the outrageously impossible is a norm? Putin's Russia, after all. Fascists who call other people fascists are fascism taken to its illogical extreme as a cult of the denial of reason. This is the final point where hate speech distorts reality. This is the apogee of the triumph of will over thought. Calling other fascists while being a fascist in Putin's main practice. I called it schizofascism. Ukrainians have a more elegant wording. They call it Russism. Timothy Snyder, American historian. So Russism is when you morbidly live in the past. Russism... It is when in real life you lose a fight on an actual battlefield in a war that you have started on your own and then you, in rage and jealousy, start to fight with families, with women and children and you destroy the electric greed and try to freeze them to death in the deep of winter and destroy the respect to all that is Russian for generations to come in the whole world and you destroy the future of your own nation but you win the hearts of elderly Soviet Valkyries. This is the end of Washington. This is a leopard tank. And this is a lady from Putin Brigades. At least that is what is written on her chest. Kaput. 
So here are some hard things brought to you in easy terms. Russism is a new national form of fascism, a pseudo-patriotic disease that infests those who did not get sick enough of Sovietness and somehow did not gain immunity to it, and it is just too late after February 24th to talk sense to these people, the very place in their brains that should have been reserved for critical logic thinking process has been brainwashed. And they became bloodthirsty zombies invading Ukraine and wanting just one thing, to murder us Ukrainians and rob us of our future, since Putin's Russians just have none of their own. Now, this is why the Jewish president of the Ukrainian nation, Volodymyr Zelensky, had his unexpected for the whole world five o'clock fighter jet tea with the British Parliament. Living a British Parliament two years ago, I thanked you for delicious English tea. <laughs> and I will be leaving the Parliament today thanking all of you in advance for powerful English planes. <laughs> By the way, it's almost five o'clock. God bless Great Britain and long Long live the king. Slava Ukraine. The United Kingdom was the first to commit its tanks to Ukraine. And it appears Lensky has their help pushing forward conversations about fighter jets too. We have moved towards solutions concerning the long-range missiles and the training of our pilots. Yes, indeed, that is an important road to getting the fighter jets we would need, he said. His meeting in Paris with German Chancellor and French President also appears to have extended that conversation. I see this meeting as a positive one and talking about concrete decisions. Indeed, I would not want to announce many things publicly, but all I can say is that we will work towards the enhancement of our capabilities, said Zelensky. Ukrainian president's renewed appeal for military aircraft comes amid warnings from Ukrainian officials that Russia is planning an offensive that is likely to include the northeastern Ukraine uh, region of Kharkiv and the southern Zaporizhia region just as well. The offensive is likely to take place this month, as Ukraine marks one year since Russia's invasion on February 24th. Probably, despite Zelensky's optimism, behind closed doors, he is very likely being warned that without a fully functioning air defense system, NATO's expensive fighter jets could become easy prey for the Russians, and that and fighter jet commitment needs to be sequenced with better air defense. Highly likely, yes. But you know what? So to understand how far our president have gotten and how good is he doing there, just go back in your memories, back to the bad old days when no one believed the Ukraine would have survived a lightning-fast Putin's blitzkrieg and try to imagine from that perspective even a possibility discussing of the conditions of British fighter jets to defend Ukraine. And you, dear world, from the maniac who wants to turn back the time, the progress and degradation and the future into the past. What was our Ukrainian answer to Putin? You know already. You were quite winged about the fact that we survived and even made the enemy flee. Well, now it is your turn, dear world, to give us some wings. And this time, of full metal. The Games. I mean the Olympic Games and International Olympic Committee. This is a page of an IOC website where you can find the job. Just come and work for these guys. Would you only look at this? Beautiful. United in diversity. Let me quote some for you. Come and join an organization where the spirit of inclusion, gender, equality and diversity is embedded in its DNA and which focuses on what unites us, a passion for sports and its values. Walk in a flexible and rewarding environment which offers competitive employee benefits and numerous incentives to live a sustainable, healthy and active life. By joining us, you become part of the Olympic movement and help to build a better world through sport. You will have the opportunity to work with people of more than 70 nationalities. 
And Russians just as well. Well, of course, why not? I mean, sport is life, or whatever it is, but a multi-billion show, that must go on. Whatever is happening in Ukraine. So the fact that 217 Ukrainian athletes were murdered by Russia has nothing to do with ideals of the committee. Citius altius fortius communiter is not a Harry Potter spell, it's a new Olympic slogan. Communiter means together in Latin. We all need to be together these hard days. All of our dead Ukrainian athletes who were killed by Russia and those Russian athletes are going to participate in the Games under a neutral flag, of course. Since it is an easy-peasy thing to resolve for the committee and its CEO, Thomas Bach, just like with a slogan, add a word together and check. Here we go. The togetherness is complete. Or not. As long as Russian forces continue to bomb you, target your civilian population and your infrastructure, as long as Russian soldiers occupy your territory, I don't want Russian athletes competing in sport. This is my conviction as a mayor, as a political leader, as a convinced European woman. I have no doubt that the International Olympic Committee will be able to support this position. And Hidalga, mayor of Paris. So... How do you guys in IOC see it, after all? Shall we be sending the remains of our 217 of our athletes killed by Russia to your beautiful office so you can embed their DNA in IOC DNA so to enhance togetherness and diversity, as your welcome page says? Should we seriously be considering our athletes competing to Russian athletes while Russian soldiers invade our land and bomb our cities just because Russian athletes are under a neutral flag? Ukraine has reacted, threatening to pull our athletes off the Olympics. Nordic nations and some Eastern European countries have said they would join a boycott too. And then Thomas Bach, the ICO CEO, reacted. Threatening a boycott of the Olympic Games, which, as you inform me, the NOC of Ukraine is currently considering, goes against the fundamentals of the Olympic movement and principles we stand for. Therefore, your letter or at this premature stage, to your fellow NOCs, to the International Federation's RNC members and to future Olympic hosts, pressuring them in an attempt to publicly influence their decision-making has been perceived by the vast majority of them as the very least extremely regrettable. Thomas Bach, President of the International Olympic Committee. Oh dear, dear Thomas Bach, sir, we in Ukraine accuse you of hypocrisy, of pseudo-tolerance, which has the same relation to freedom as death has to life. We accuse you of blindness, of a comfortable, cosy office blindness that allows you to sit in your magnificent headquarters, enjoying a clear blue sky and air raids don't blare in the air and Russian missiles are not destroying your gyms, your stadiums, your homes and your families. We accuse you of that your blurred eyesight a neutral Russian flag is enough for you to neutralize Russian crimes in Ukraine. We accuse you of forgetting, if ever knowing, the difference between art and artificial diversity. The art is all about quality and artificiality is all about the quantity. We accuse you of the fact that you yourself would never even sit next to someone whose country have murdered, raped and burnt your family. Yet you want us Ukrainians to do it and call our anger and outrage premature. You maybe are the head of the committee, Thomas Bach, but you definitely are no heart of it, sir. Just facts, no commands. Production of household appliances in Russia decreased by 40% in 2022. One of the main reasons for the sharp decline was the departure of a number of foreign brands that had factories in Russian Federation. We are talking about companies such as LG, Electrolux, Indesi, Bosch and Samsung. The former Ford car plant near St. Petersburg was converted into woodworking production. It was here that one of the first Russian factories for the production of foreign cars appeared 20 years ago. Hundreds of thousands of Ford Focuses were assembled on this conveyor, which flooded the whole country. And now they will make boards and coffins. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Novak. Russia will reduce oil production by 500,000 barrels per day in March. And that means no one takes Russian oil, even with huge discounts. We have to close the wells. 
Russian budget revenues from exports collapsed by almost four times in January. The Federal Customs Service has transferred 373.3 billion rubles to the Federal Treasury, 31% less than in the same month a year earlier. Input revenues, including duties and VAT on goods imported from abroad, sank by only 7.5%. However, export customs duties have collapsed almost fourfold, 74.2 billion rubles against 262 billion in January 2021. The collapse of export revenues of the budget took place despite the fact that in January the oil companies managed to sharply increase sales abroad and tankers even removed a record volume in four years from the Baltic ports. That will be all good news for today in our weekly wrap-up on UATV channel brought to you by our gorgeous UATV team and me, Henry Keane, for the whole free world directly from Ukraine. Stay safe and tune for more.